Hello and what's up, GSC Pokemon Challenges fam. How you guys doing? We just dropped episode 5 of the Faulkner Minimal Battle series on the channel. I'm just going to start filming immediately on episode 6. I'm just trying to bust a few of these out. I have a few holidays in a row and I figure, what the heck, let's just get a little ahead on the content here so that we can just schedule it out, you know, every couple weeks or something like that. Just so that you guys can keep getting through this series and I can keep learning about Gen 2. We have already beaten Faulkner with 50 Pokemon on minimum battles. No optional battles, no grinding. These are on max DVs, which means they are the best possible version. Max DVs is max IVs for anybody coming from later gens. But still, 50 Pokemon have managed to beat Faulkner, including a lot of Pokemon that you wouldn't really expect to be able to beat them. A lot of grass types. Plenty of bug types. Last time we got Blossom, Vileplume, and uh, Venomoth to get through that fight in spite of their type disadvantages. Today we have a really diverse set of Pokemon. We're starting out with the Diglett line, going to the Meowth line, Psyduck line. We've got Mankey coming in here. My personal favorite Pokemon, Arcanine, is going to be in this episode. We're going to also be trying the Meryl line and Pseudo Wudo. So we've just got a variety of Pokemon with a variety of different typings. I assume a very big variety of moves, but how many of them get through? You guys tell me down below. I always love to read the comments and uh, it's always fun to just find out if you guys are right or not. How many Pokemon can actually beat Faulkner on minimum battles? I'm going to place my guesses right now. I think that probably Doug Trio gets through. Diglett might not have enough defense. Here, I think Meowth and Persian have a good shot of getting through just because of their same type attack bonus with reasonably strong normal type moves. I think Golduck will get through, Psyduck won't. I'm very interested to see how Mankey and Primeape do. I think Primeape will get through, Mankey will not. Growlithe and Arcanine are getting through on this one. I I'm just willing to bet that. Now, the Meryl and Azumarill, I don't know their movesets, so I don't know if they'll get through or not. And Pseudo Wudo, of course, being a rock type, is going to get a lot of mud slaps. But it might be able to get through. We're just going to have to see. In fact, I think Pseudo Wudo will get through, but we'll just have to find out if it's actually possible or not. So with that being said, let's get into the first challenger, which will be Doug Trio today and just find out if it can actually get the job done. All right, so here we are. We have our Doug Trio. We replaced Cyndaquil with Doug Trio so that we'll be up against Totodile as we go through the run. And uh, here, Doug Trio starts with a moveset of Scratch, Try Attack, ooh, Saucy. We've got Growl and we've got Magnitude. Obviously, we can't use Magnitude up against anything in Faulkner's Gym. They're all flying types, so they can't be affected by that, but Try Attack being a fairly strong move might just be enough to get us through this one so uh yeah let's see all right and it's time for rival one with doug trio let's see how he goes so here i think we tr let's try attack yeah it does decent damage here and it's a three hit ko there but a very easy victory nice now we could have gone magneton or magnitude, <laughs> not magneton, magnitude, and uh, probably done some pretty decent damage there too. But and we'll talk to Professor Elm and just let him freak out, as he usually does. And uh, yeah, he's like, "Hey, I gave you a Doug Trio, and you seem good at it. Go fight a gym leader." <laughs> oh, legend. Okay, so here we are. We can just heal up very quickly. And it's time to get into Faulkner's Gym already with our first challenger, so I'll save the game right here. Um, I may give a berry just in case, but we'll try it once without a berry. So here, stats-wise, we are at level 6 with Doug Trio. We've got 22 HP. We know Tri Attack, Scratch, Growl, and Magnitude. Obviously, Magnitude can't work on flying types. And we've got 16 Attack, 12 Defense, 12 Special Attack. 15 special defense, 21 in speed. We're going to outspeed everything. The defense is the problem. That's the real problem. We may need the the uh, berry just for that. But let's try once against Honest Dave without it. So here, 
try attack does about a third and we are out speeding here and we froze it <laughs> so now i'm just gonna scratch it down there we go okay <laughs> so doug trio wins oh that was stupid try attack actually has status here in gen 2 which is ridiculous so uh yeah we'll take that we'll take the freeze now let's fight against uh rod stewart here and uh here we're just gonna stick with the tri attack strats okay we can scratch to just finish that one off here we're just hoping that tri attack does decent damage we get a critical hit there so nice we have beaten rod stewart as well we're gonna just potion up here and let's give Doug Trio a berry as we get into the Faulkner fight. If we get lucky status, we can just win here. So I think we don't have any problems, but let's just see. We're coming in at level eight. We've got 26 HP now, same moveset as before, but now we have 20 in attack, 15 in defense, 15 special attack, 18 special defense, and we got 26 speed. We're going to outspeed everything on the team here easily. But it's a question of how much damage we do. So let's find out. Here, we're going to lead off still again with try attack. It's looking like a two hit KO. We burned the Pidgey. And we just scratch it down. Nice. Now here, let's go for try attack on Pidgeotto. It gives us a gust. And another gust we're gonna heal right here it's doing eight damage per hit three try attacks was enough to take that one down though so we beat faulkner on the first attempt with doug trio really no problem it's easy win now i think we learn mud slap i'm not sure we want to because we'll get moves like dig later on but yeah doug trio does in fact beat the first gym you know, it's it's always going to be a low HP Pokemon, even here at level 20 or at level 9, it only has 28 HP. But it does have a pretty good moveset. I think Tri Attack will allow us to eventually get through Bugsy without too much trouble. Uh, the fact that we have Magnitude and that Levitate doesn't exist yet as a ability means that we should be able to take down Rival 2's Ghastly. So I think we always have a chance in every fight. And we're super fast, but we have no defense with this Pokemon. 22 attack, 17 defense, 17 special attack, 20 special defense, and 29 in speed. I mean, we're, we're really just going to be all about speed in this one as we go through. But there we go. We have beaten the first gym with this Doug Trio. So very nice. Let's move on to our second Pokemon of the day, which will be the Diglett. Now I think Diglett's only gonna start with Scratch and Growl, but that might still be fine. The bigger issue is the defense because it's gonna have even lower defense than Dugtrio. And I think that might be the reason it gets wrecked ultimately. So here we will grab our Diglett, which we have put in the place of Cyndaquil yeah we've got only scratch and growl so we don't have the status as an option here if this were gen 1 and if critical hits were based on speed we'd be in better shape but we're still gonna try to win this one without a berry because i think we need the berries in the gym okay so we outspeed so we're gonna growl first okay he leers oh look how much more damage he's doing than us. This might be a spot where we can't win without a berry. Okay, so let's growl at him. He misses Leer this time. That's nice. Here, I think we can get through. We heal up. Okay, so there we go. We can get through, but it's it's kind of bad. It's, yeah. Like, we don't have try attack so it's, it's much worse than the Doug Trio. That's for sure. All right, so Diglett has made it to Faulkner's Gym. We're at level six. We've only got 19 HP. We've only no Scratch and Growl, so we're definitely weaker than Doug Trio, like a lot weaker. We also have 
very bad defensive stats. We've only got 13 in attack, 9 in defense, 11 in special attack, 12 in special defense, 18 in speed. So once again, speed is our forte. And we need to give a berry to this one. I think to have any shot whatsoever. All right, let's find out. So I'm going to start off by trying to just attack. Let's see how that goes. Oh, and here he outspeeds and he does more than half damage. Turn one. So we're just not quite fast enough to outspeed here. Yeah, he has one more speed than we do. So now we heal up to full health, but he's still doing... 8 damage per hit and we just don't survive enough hits so yeah Diglett not possible we we have to eliminate Diglett from the set because unfortunately it just doesn't have enough HP and defense to get through this so Diglett is actually the first Pokemon eliminated today which is pretty terrible so let's just update my front end or my uh my list a little bit all right so getting through the first section we add diglet to the fail list and we add doug trio to the pass list and it kind of makes sense i mean really we've got to deal with the fact that diglet just has so little defense and so little hp it's just not getting through there doug trio is quite a bit bulkier and faster meaning it just gets the hit off first and the addition of Tri-Attack is just massive in this one. All right, so that does it for that first set of Pokemon, though. So now we get to move on to Persian. And Persian, I am very confident, gets through this. Stab with normal-type moves, I think, is going to be way too OP. As usual, when I don't know what to go against, I'm going to go up against Totodile. Just since it, I think, is the harder attacker later on. But yeah, we start out with Scratch, Growl, and Bite. And this is a pretty good set. Like, we can basically just bite everything, I think, and win with our Persian. So that's going to be the game plan. Bite everything. <laughs> this, this is like the worst cat ever. <laughs> just bites everyone. Okay, so here, I don't think we need the item. So we're going to take the item off. Don't need that berry. I don't think. So here, let's save the game. Let's get into the rival one fight, which should be pretty easy, I think. Let's just bite. Okay, it's doing decent damage. We get the flinch there. Easy win. The good news, I think, today is going to be that there aren't going to be a lot of spots where we're like going for really luck-based strategies like supersonic or anything like that i think most of the time these are going to be pretty cut and dry like either it's obvious that we can win or it's obvious that we can't win and we just you know use that information to make our decisions pretty easy you know here we almost one shot that ratata but we did two shot it so there we go but yeah, I think these are just going to be really, really cut and dry in a lot of spots. Oh, I keep forgetting that Bite is dark type in this gen, isn't it? Oh, it's not normal type. That's why my Bite isn't doing much damage. Rip. I was sitting there wondering, why isn't Bite doing more damage? Because it's dark type. Oh, gen 2. This is how you know I'm a gen 1 player sitting here using bite with a normal type pokemon all right so let's save the game right here and uh we can check our stats here we are coming into the gym at level six we have 25 hp we have scratch growl and bite on the move set and we've got 15 attack 14 defense 14 special attack 14 special defense and 20 in speed so we should already basically be out speeding here Let's get into the Honest Abe fight. Don't even necessarily think we need the berry here. Let's go Scratch. And here we're able to win 
just like that. No need for a held item. Just heal up here. Now let's get into this next fight against Rod Smith, Rod Stewart, whichever Rod you want him to be. And uh, yeah, just going to stick with Scratch here. Think it's the best play. Okay, so we get some XP there. Nice. Here we're outspeeding. Looks like three hit KOs here. So yeah, we get through just fine. Level up to level eight. Here we'll just heal up. We're going to give a berry just for this fight against Faulkner. Let's save the game. And let's just check our stats here. So going into Faulkner, we've now made it to level eight. We've got 31 HP, same moveset. But now we have 18 in attack, 17 in defense, 18 in both of the specials, and 26 in speed. So we're going to just outspeed everything and hit them first. Let's see how this goes. All right, so... It's worth noting that both of our moves are effectively the same power because of our stab bonus in normal. So in theory, we should still go for bite because it has the chance to flinch. Look at the flinches come in. And here we can just continue flinching things. Oh, look at the flinches. Oh, we didn't even need the berry. <laughs> Persian, you legend. So we managed to beat Faulkner on the first attempt with this Pokemon. Easy win, easy game. And uh, yeah, going into the next section, I don't think we have any major issues, especially because Bite is dark type. So we have a move to deal with rocks um, and ghosts. So yeah, we've got 33 HP at level nine. We're going into the next section with the same moveset. But we also have 20 in attack, 18 in defense, 19 in both specials now, and 28 in speed. So we're just never going to have to worry about being at, outsped by basically anything. So very good. Now that Persian gets through, does Meowth get through? So here we get our Meowth. And yep, sure enough, scratch and growl. I want to try to win this fight without the berry. Because then we can keep the berry for a tougher fight later. Here, Scratch seems to be doing decent damage. And we outspeed. So, there we go. We beat Totodile on the first attempt with no problems whatsoever. And we can move on. And our stats coming in here. We're at level 6, we have 22 HP, Scratch and Growl is a moveset. Not a great moveset, but a moveset nonetheless. And a, we have 12 in attack, 11 in defense, and both specials. But we've got a whopping 17 in speed. We're still going to be outsped in this first fight though. Let's see if we can manage to win it. That's the real question. So here we get pecked for... It looks like nine damage. We managed to heal up there. Okay, so we're definitely gonna need to use Growl. The question is how many Growls do we use? Do we go for one? Do we go for two? We just need more turns. So here, I'm gonna Growl at him here. Now he's doing like six damage per hit. So we can survive one more attack before he knocks us out. We might need a couple growls here. And some crits. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. I think we just have to eliminate Meowth. I don't think it gets through here. All right, so out of the next two Pokemon, now that we've finished Persian and Meowth, we basically have to add Meowth to the fail column. It just doesn't seem to get the job done. Whereas Persian, on the other hand, does get this one without too much issue. Uh, here, sorry, we need to update it so that Meowth will actually go to the fail section. 
There we go. We pop Meowth up to the fail section. It's kind of too bad. It's just not quite enough defense and not quite enough attack to be able to get through. It's kind of the same for Dugtrio. And it kind of strengthens my thesis that these unevolved forms are going to lose this one, whereas the evolved Pokemon are going to win this one. But now we got to try Golduck, which at least in Pokemon Red and Blue is a water type that doesn't start with any water type moves. But maybe they've updated the set here in Gen 2. I'm not sure. Let's find out. Okay, so here we use the ultimate Pokemon randomizer to put Golduck in the place of Totodile. We want to go up against Chikorita in this run. And we start out with Disable, Confusion, Tail Whip, and Scratch. Okay. I think that Confusion will let us get through this. Scratch also not too bad, and we've seen Disable be pretty OP by stopping our opponent from using their strongest move. So, and let's fight this rival here. See how he goes. So here, I think we can go Confusion first. Okay, he goes Growl, that's fine, because we're just going to stick with Confusion. Looks like a three-hit KO there. Yeah, easy, easy win. Let's check our stats here very quickly. Golduck coming in at level six here. Has 27 HP. We've got Scratch, Tail Whip, Disable, and Confusion on our moveset. And we have 16 attack, 16 defense, 18 special attack. Only 16 special defense and 17 in speed. Basically, speed and uh, special attack are slightly good for us, but let's just see if Confusion wrecks since it's a special move. So here, I'm going to go Confusion... Confusion. I don't think we need to get cute. I think we just, yeah, four shot there and win. And now let's check our stats. So we are sitting here now at level eight after the level up. Ooh, that's that's a nice animation. Ooh, I like that Golduck animation there. But yeah, we're at level eight. We have 33 HP, same move set as before, but now we've got 20 in attack and defense, 22 special attack, 20 in defense, or special defense, sorry, 20 in special defense, and we've got 21 in speed. We should outspeed everything here. And we're definitely aiming towards, or leaning towards the physical, or sorry, the special attack. We are leaning towards the special attack since we have spy, higher special so we're going to be going Confusion the whole way here, I think. So here we are, Faulkner attempt one. I'm going to try to just Confusion him. Let's see if we can just get through that. We do. And here, let's just stick with Confusion. We outspeed here. Gust doesn't do that much to us. So, and we confuse the Pidgeotto. It hits itself in Confusion. Easy win. So, uh, yeah, Golduck gets through, no problem. And next, we're going to have to test out Psyduck. But before we get into that, let's just think about this next section very quickly. Because we're going into it level 9 now. We've got 36 HP. This moveset is pretty good. Even if we run into a rock type, we've got Confusion. We've got Scratch for coverage. Like, I think this will be fine. Here, we're going to have... A little bit more special attack on 25 our other um attack defense and special defense all 22 speed 23 yeah i don't think we'll outspeed when we get to uh bugsy's gym against scyther but i think we'll do de well enough damage between disable where we could disable something like fury cutter if he tries to set it up and of course we can uh use confusion to deal damage so yeah I think this one's going to be pretty good. Anyway, with that being said, let's move on to Psyduck. Here, we're just going to go same again through our early game. No change here. I'm waiting for a package. I'm, I'm hoping that I'll hear the, the doorbell ring when uh, that comes. In fact, I'm keeping one one ear, ear off of the uh, headphones so that I can uh, hopefully, hopefully, key being the word, or keyword being hopefully, hear the uh the doorbell 
I'm getting a new microphone and microphone arm. Uh, all thanks to the wonderful contributions of the people over on RBY Pokemon Challenges. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, GSC Pokemon Challenges gets the same benefit because I use the same setup for both. Um, you know, we're, we're just trying to build this thing up, you know? So, uh, let's see. Psyduck, I put it in the Totodile Ball. Yes, very good. So, there we go. We've got ourselves a Psyduck. We're not going to give him a nickname. Now, he's going to start with Scratch and Tail Whip here. And obviously, it's a worse Pokemon than Golduck. But we just have to see. Can we take enough damage? Can we deal enough out that we'll be able to get through this section? I'm not sure. So here we go. We are about to get into the rival one fight. I'm going to try to fight him without a berry first. Let's just see if this is possible. Um, ideally, I think we tail whip him. Okay, we outsped too. Now let's scratch. He misses a tackle turn one. And we're not doing a ton of damage here. I think... We really want to not get the growl. And we're in a speed tie here, so it's it's just random who goes first each turn. But I think if we win enough of the speed flips, we can get through this. So here he growls, we tail whip. Here we're tail whipping again. He tackles, he tackles again. We need to win more speed flips. We're not winning enough of them. Oh, and he misses, and we win the speed flip. So there we go. We are able to beat him without a berry with Psyduck. Um, it wasn't great, <laughs> but we did manage it. So uh, yeah, there's that. Okay, so here we're going to give a berry. No, you need a berry, not an antidote. Okay, so he has a berry, and let's just check the stats. Psyduck, level 6. 23 HP, we know Scratch and Tail Whip going into the gym. We have 13 attack, 12 defense, 14 special attack, 12 special defense, 13 in speed. We're not going to outspeed anything here. And I think it's going to come down to whether we can survive enough and the Tail Whips plus the Berry, how that goes. Um, so here I'm Tail Whipping first because I think we need more damage output. Oh, look how little damage we do, though. He's he's doing so much damage to us. And yeah, we're getting wrecked there. Let's see if, like, maybe two Tail Whips changes our ranges at all. Um, but this is not looking good. Okay, so we'll Tail Whip and Tail Whip. Seems to be doing seven damage per hit here. Seven to eight damage per hit. And it looks like we just don't have the damage output. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. We could try to get this to work, but yeah, we'd, we'd need multiple crits here. So yeah, unfortunately, I think Psyduck is just out of there. It doesn't beat Honest Abe. We've got the berry on, like, you know, we can't get any extra levels here. So Psyduck, we're going to eliminate from this challenge. So now let's move on to another Pokemon. Now that we've decided that Psyduck is, is out of there. Let's try the Primeape. <laughs> Amazon Primeape back. Somebody was saying that it needed to be Optimus Primeape, but <laughs> I mean, that, that does kind of make sense. If we do, the next time I do a Primeape run, I'm gonna do Optimus Primeape. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Now, Primeape is going to be interesting. It depends on what moves it starts out with. Uh, if we have some decent attacking moves, we might just be able to get through these fights. The problem is our type disadvantage, which I just don't know how we overcome. So we're going to go up against, uh, I believe, the Chikorita line. Yes, because Grass is resistant to fighting, I think. At least in Gen 1 it was. Okay, but here we are starting with Scratch, Leer, Low Kick, and Rage. Ooh. Let's get into this fight here. So, uh, first fight against the rival. We are going into this fight. I'm going to use Rage. 
Uh, accepting that he's going to tackle me and that as my rage builds, I will do more and more damage. And uh, we just keep spamming rage. There we go. Easy win. Easy, easy win. Rage completely broken. Gen 2, it's a good move. Nobody can nobody can criticize rage. It's what it was always meant to be here in Gen 2. So, oh, there's my package. All right, there we go. Now we're in good shape. We got the drink. We got our package in. We got all kinds of stuff going. And there we go. We can get that set up. Cool. And, oops. Oh no, I said yes to the catch tutorial. Rip. Rando guy is like, yes. Use this. Use this ball. <laughs> Let me show you how to use your balls, buddy. <laughs> Oh man, Pokemon has so many terrible puns. Terrible, terrible things to say. Alright, so here, let's fight this guy. Where, uh... Let's just see how much low kick does here. That's a one-hitter, of course. And now against the rat, low kick. Easy, easy win. Easy win. Cakewalk, actually, with this Primeape. He's, he's too overpowered. I want to name him like Snuggles or something like that. Snuggles the Primeape. <laughs> Sorry, to me that's hilarious. But here we go. We have made it to Falconer's Gym. We're going to save the game and check our stats. Primeape. Coming in at level 6, we've got 25 HP. We know Scratch, Leer, Low Kick, and Rage. We have 19 attack, 14 defense, 14 special attack, 15 special defense, 18 speed. And the real question is just, can we deal enough damage? That's that's all it comes down to. Let's try a few different strats here. Let's go for the low kick strat, because it's at least neutrally effective here. Um, we are outsped, and that did more than half damage to us. And yeah, we got wrecked. Is there another strat that we can use? Let's just see how much rage does. Oh, it does like that much. <laughs> so even with the rage built up, it we do less than low kick. Um, the other question is, do we just need a critical hit from low kick? Like, how much damage would we do if we got a crit here? Because if we only need one critical hit, then I think we just grind it out. And that looks like a range where if we get one crit, we probably get through this with our Primeape. Like, we've gotten a couple critical hits. We've just gotten them in the worst possible situations where, like, then he critical hits or, you know, we missed a low kick and then we got the critical hit. Uh, we need not that. Okay, there's the crit. Oh, we survive with one HP. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, Primeape, you legend. All right, so uh, here, now I think we can just potion up. And here in this next fight, I think it's even simpler. I think we just go for rage and win, basically. Let's just see, right? So uh, Rod Stewart, he's here to, to fight us. But I'm going to just use rage and let the Pidgeys tackle me and build my rage up even more. So we knock that first Pidgey out, no problems. Here, the second Pidgey, yeah, tackle. We'll basically do nothing, and we end up doing tons of damage. Nice. So here, I think that's the strategy on Faulkner, actually, is to go for rage strats. Let's save the game. And let's just see how we're doing stats-wise here. So Primeape, currently, is sitting on 31 HP at level 8. We've got Scratch, Leer, Low Kick, and Rage still. And we have 24 in attack. That's a huge attack stat. We've only got 17 in defense. 17 special attack, 18 special defense. Don't really matter in this gym. And we've got 22 in speed. So we should outspeed both of Faulkner's Pokemon. Let's see if this is enough to get Primeape through. I'm pretty sure Mankey's not getting through based on the Honest Ape fight. But Primeape has at least managed this far. So... Yeah. So here I'm going to go Rage. Okay. 
Pidgey tackles me, it doesn't do a lot of damage, fortunately. He tackles again, so we get even more rage. That's nice. And now we're just gonna stick with rage. We outspeed here. We get hit by gust, but we get a heal. And now rage is not quite enough to knock out there, but we get it on the last one. So four HP remaining, we level up to level nine, but Primate has managed to beat Faulkner on minimum battles. <laughs> this is kind of stupid. Uh, Rage is OP. Low kick, pretty darn good too. Um, we did need the critical hit to get through Honest Abe, but we were able to beat Faulkner on the first attempt. So yeah, Primeape, actually pretty, pretty darn good. I'm, I'm gonna give it some credit here. In this next section, of course, the Union Cave Hiker, if we do have to fight him, is not going to be a big issue. We're going to just be able to say, like, hey, <laughs> we we have a low kick, so get wrecked. The real problem is going to be when we get to rival number two. Do we learn Mud Slap? Yes, we do. Okay, so Mud Slap is going to be the key there because that's the only way we're going to be able to hit the Ghastly, I think. And uh, we're going to need to just go Mud Slap strats to win that fight, I think. Fortunately, we're not weak to anything that Bayleaf will do, so we should be able to then get through the rest of the team with Rage or something like that. But yeah going to be a very interesting fight nonetheless but i think primate is poised to be able to do this so uh yeah angry monkey <laughs> good job angry monkey uh my goodness so let's just save this game here and it's time to give Mankey his shot but i think we can already pretty much call it uh that this one's not gonna work you know we we just never know Okay, so here we've got Mankey. Let's see what moves we got. Oh, we only start with Scratch and Leer. And I don't think we get low kick till like maybe level nine or something like that. So I I think with just this moveset, there's a zero chance that we get through the, the first Bird Keeper in Faulkner's gym. Yeah, level nine is the level we would reach after beating Faulkner with this Pokemon because it's in the medium fast level up group. The We really like Pokemon that are in the medium slow level up group because they actually level up faster in the early game. They level up fast and then they tail off at the end. So some people have said like, you know, a diminishing or declining growth rate is the better way to call the, uh, the medium slow level up group. And the, I would really call the medium fast level up group like the steady growth rate. Um, they always just need whatever the next level is to the third power, you know, to the power of three. That's how much XP they need to level up, but it stays stable and consistent for the entire entire run. So they just kind of grow up steadily, right? Whereas the medium slow group is really like kind of a, a diminishing, you know, fading growth rate. But uh, yeah. So here I'm going to take the berry off because I think if we are going to have any shot, we're going to need that berry later. Let's try rival one with our angry little manky. We're going to go scratch right away. It is a stronger move. Uh, tackles doing some damage. Come on. Oh, he gets a crit too. You jerk. I think if he doesn't get the crit, I think we win. Even with the growl. Don't give me the growl. Just just tackle. Just tackle turn one. Let's see. We outspeed, so we'll always get the first one off. There he misses growl, so that's even better. Um, because now we really just win. Uh, but we do need one more hit. So, yeah, it's, it's not consistent to beat rival one with Mankey even. And then we've got to deal with, you know, the type disadvantage in Faulkner's gym. Like we'll we'll get through the youngster just fine. That's 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 just a given, but yeah, I just don't think don't think we're gonna have any shot in the gym. Let's check our stats here. So we're coming in at level six. We've got 22 HP. We only know scratch and leer. 
And I think the real problem is that 12 defense stat. So we've got 16 in attack, 11 in defense, sorry, not 12 in defense. What am I talking about? We've got 11 in defense, 11 special attack, 12 special defense. Neither of the specials matter, obviously. We've got 15 in speed, but we don't outspeed at this point. And I think the Spiro is just going to destroy this Mankey. So here, I'm going to give the Mankey a berry, but I won't be surprised if even after we heal with the berry, we're still in a, basically a one hit KO range. So we only ever get one hit off is my bet. Let's find out if that's true or not. So here, Peck, yeah, does that much damage. Uh, so he did 17 damage when he hit us the first turn. And now... He's just going to destroy us the second turn, even after we heal with the berry. So what we can say definitively is that this bird keeper, impossible. We we actually cannot beat this bird keeper with this Mankey. There's, there's just nothing to use there uh, that will do more damage. Um, and so the only option we would have would be to level up. Like we could go through the Sprout Tower, we could do all that other stuff. But minimum battles wise, Mankey ain't getting through. We can now see that we're, we're basically batting 50-50 at this point. It's the evolved Pokemon are getting through, the unevolved Pokemon aren't. Dugtrio, Persian, Golduck, and Primeape have managed to beat Faulkner on minimal battles. The unevolved forms of those, Diglett, Meowth, Psyduck, and Mankey have all failed to beat Faulkner on minimal battles. So if you're doing like a squidgy run, uh, Squidgy's just one of my favorite Gen 2 PocoTubers and, you know, a guy who's very similar level to me. We've got about the same number of subscribers. He and I, uh, my RBY Pokemon Challenges channel and his uh, channel Squidgy. But, you know, he does his runs where he starts with unevolved Pokemon and he evolves them as he goes through the game. And in a lot of those runs, we can see like unevolved forms not getting through while evolved forms do get through so there are a lot of spots where if you play like that absolutely take a couple optional battles before you get to the first gym it will make things more consistent and and make make it so that some of these pokemon that are impossible to beat faulkner can beat faulkner what we can say pretty clearly though is like except for P Mankey, the psyduck the meowth the Diglett, we're all just a little off of getting through. So probably just one or two additional levels. Probably gets them through. Probably two additional levels, get them to level 8, get them to a damage rounding threshold on their attacks, and I'm willing to bet those ones beat Valkner. The Mankey is the exception because of its type disadvantage. So with that being said though, it's time to now try Arcanine, my personal favorite Pokemon. I don't know what its moveset is in Gen 2. I don't care. We're getting this Pokemon through Faulkner on minimal battles. Or we're going to die trying. Basically, the reason I like Arcanine so much is, you know, it's it's the original legendary Pokemon. I mean, it's, it's more legendary than the legendary birds. It learns Dragon Rage, in spite of being a fire type. I mean, it just has so many cool things to it. Look at that. Look at that sprite even. Oh, what a good boy. What a good, good boy. And we start with Flame Wheel, Take Down. Roar is kind of useless, but we've got Leer. I mean, don't get me wrong. We can phase, I guess, in Gen 2. So there's a Pokemon we don't really want to see at first. We could always Roar it to get it out of the way. But uh, yeah, Take Down, reasonably strong. Uh, does recoil damage, but... Yeah, and Flame Wheel, same type attack move. Should be reasonably strong here too. So we've got some tools. We've got some tools with this legendary Pokemon to try to beat Faulkner. So let's just save again without the berry. And let's try the rival one fight where I think we go takedown this whole way. Like, yeah, it's got recoil, but it should do decent damage, I think. Yeah, look at the damage there. Not quite a two-hitter, but here, Flame Wheel. Yeah, easy win. Just not really anything to say there. Arcanine's way too OP, way too strong. Of course it's going to win. It's a, it's a god-tier Pokemon, guys. Come on. The greatest Pokemon ever designed. Period. 
end of story end of debate we're gonna beat the game on minimum battles with this one i guarantee it come hell or high water i'm going to beat the entire game on minimum battles with my arcanine don't you don't you dare disbelieve it it will two hit and there we go easy win we get to level six we are in the slow level up group here this is our first slow level up pokemon i think in this entire set um you know because legendary of course i mean it's in the pokedex it says that this is a legendary pokemon so uh who are we to dis disagree or disregard what the pokedex says come on <laughs> better than celebi better than mewtwo better than all of them arcanine is the one so here let's check our stats we're coming in at level six of course we've got 28 hp flame wheel leer takedown and roar is the move set we've got 20 in attack 16 in defense 18 special attack 16 special defense 18 speed we're not going to quite outspeed here in this first fight i don't think it matters i think we just go in and try to flame wheel that's that's my basic game plan flame wheel with stab is just as good as using takedown except it doesn't have recoil and yeah we are being legendary by just you know flaming that uh that little spiro to death if anything holds this one back it's gonna be the slow level up group i'm sure of it um otherwise it should just crush so here let's get into rod stewart now honest abe was no trouble rod stewart you have a chance we're going to uh flame wheel a couple times on these pidgeys nice level up to level seven now flame wheel again and here we're not gonna one shot these pidgeys of course but we deal decent damage good enough damage here's where we will give a berry and let's save the game let's just see how we're stacking up what's the tail of the tape up against Faulkner well we've got level seven and yeah, look at that nice little animation on this, this Arcanine there. Stamps his foot. Wiggles his, wiggles his hair a little bit. Oh my god. <laughs> so here we are, level 7. We've got 31 HP. We still have the same moveset, of course. We've got 22 in attack, 18 in defense, 21 special attack now. The 18 special defense doesn't matter here. We've got 20 in speed. We should be out speeding here. Let's just see how we go. Here, this is the lowest leveled Pokemon we've had at this point so far. Only level 7. It is one level higher than you would get to Brock in Gen 1. So, we're actually a little bit better here with Arcanine. I expect some Mud Slap shenanigans, though. So, I think we're going Flame Wheel here. If we could get a crit, then we would just one-shot here. But we get through, no problem. Now, on to the Pidgeotto. We're still flaming it. Looks like a three hit KO, but look how little damage he does. And we never miss. So the legend that is Arcanine just completely destroys that one here. And uh, yeah, we managed to get Mud Slap as a TM. I don't know if we learn it or not. I don't know the TM level up learn sets well enough here. But here I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to pop over here. I'm going to... Heal at the Pokemon Center. I just want to test something out real quick. Just want to see how how does this this Arcanine go here. But here's what I want to see: like, how many trainers are actually in the next section? Right? We're getting pretty close, so we can skip that guy. Obviously, uh, she's looking at a wall, so she's not a threat. Okay, there's a bridge. We can skip that guy. Okay, we can pop right up here and grab the Great Ball. So those are all skippable. This guy is a spinner. We get through him just fine. Now we've got Slowpoke Tail Guy for a million dollars. <laughs> so uh, here, let's just go ahead and save right here. And we're about to Union Cave. So we're about to see just how many required battles there are here. Rip, I did not mean to run into that guy. So we'll go past that guy. Okay, so we get through that whole section without any required battles. 
Um, we can grab the X attack there. That guy's not required. Here, we can save the game. And... Yeah, this guy's a spinner. So... We can get past him. Oh, and I ran into this guy by mistake. I'm not sure that we have to fight that guy either, though. Okay, we can grab the great ball that's right there next to this guy, but we can avoid that guy. Can grab this item. Cool. Here, let's just save the game. We're going to have to do some shenanigans with, like, uh, sneaking past things. But, you know, there, there are going to be resets in the next section, just trying to avoid trainers. Okay, but now we can pop over here. We can grab the Swift TM. Um, we can grab the X Defend. We're not allowed to use it in battle, obviously, but... Um, so yeah, any Pokemon that learns Swift is going to be able to get Swift here. We're, oops. We got to be careful here. This guy could uh, see us. Could uh, mess up my plans. Okay, so we've gotten past that guy now. Okay, we can still get down here to grab the Awakening. Not that we need it. But yeah. Okay, so the entire cave doesn't have a single required trainer. Oh, Dunsparce guy. <laughs> He's like, Dunsparce. But here, we'll grab the Awakening just to uh, get some extra extra power here. Um, We get a Poison Cure Berry there. Cool. So here, now... We can just go past that spinner. And uh, here... We have made it to this next section. So, uh... That's a revive, okay. I don't think we can get headbutt until we've um, dealt with Bugsy. Yeah. Like, we, we'd even want the charcoal, but first we need to talk to this guy. So here we go. Sorry, we're just testing this out very quickly. Um, just so that we get a firm understanding of what... Okay, I'm not sure I need that white apricot, but... Let's go into Slowpoke Well here. And, uh, you know, I used to be an adventurer like you, and then I took an arrow in the knee guy right here. Kurt, he's just like... <laughs> I hurt my knee. <laughs> so here we can fight this rocket here. So here, let's um, flame wheel. Oh, we just wrecked that one. Nice. Now out comes another Rattata, but we're not taking too much damage. And we can just flame wheel that one down. Nice. And uh, we beat the first rocket grunt. Here, I'm just going to potion. Here, I think we want to take off the berry. So let's just take that. And here, we can fight the next rocket grunt. Zubat comes out. Okay, we're not too scared of a Zubat here. Um, leech life. <laughs> Laughable move. My Arcanine cares not for your leech life. The Ekans... Oh, it wraps me, but Gen 2 wrap, not that strong, so we're uh, just going to uh, flame wheel this one down too, so nice, easy win. Okay, and I believe we've got one more rocket grunt here to, to deal with. I don't believe we get a progress without dealing with these, so here we'll fight this guy. So, flame wheel here. Nice. We get a flame wheel here on this one. We get confused. Okay, that was kind of bad. But flame wheel does the job there against that Zubat. Another Zubat, but more flame wheels. Basically, my game plan 
Use flame wheel. <laughs> so there we go. We we knocked that one out too. And the final rocket grunt right here. Has a coughing. Okay. So flame wheel. He uses smog. We get poisoned. But there we managed to knock that one out. Cool. So yeah, we we get through that whole section. Did he heal us? Oh, he did. So uh, yeah. Oh, there's the rival now. So we can flame wheel on Ghastly. It's looking like a two hit KO here. Cool. Okay, he comes out with Croconaw. I'm gonna roar at this. I think we just want to see a different Pokemon. Okay, like the, the Zubat should be no issue for us. Okay, we get confused, but that's, that's fine. That's whatever. So we outspeed Croconaw at this point. So if, if we just have like one more level there, we clearly are good enough to get through that. So let's go into the gym here. Save the game right here. So we obviously have to fight this first pair of trainers here. They've got a spinner rack. We know flame wheel. Get wrecked. <laughs> um, Lediba. Think it's more of the same. Get wrecked. So there we level up to level 12. Nice. So here now we want to check which way to go. We've got that guy and we've got this guy. Okay, so this guy, his, his team is one Paris, okay? So that's one Paris on that side. What do we have if we go the opposite direction here? Oh, we've got a Caterpie. So we've got two Pokemon on that team. So that, that way it gives more XP. So we want to go this way. We want to fight the one Paris. Two Pokemon at roughly the same levels are always going to give more XP than one Pokemon. Here, fortunately, we can just, you know, flame wheel that one to death. Cool. Here, we want to save the game right here. We, we should be able to get past the spinner here. Um... Yeah, and now we've made it to Bugsy. Okay, so Bugsy, time for round number one. So here is the Bugsy fight. We're just going to go Flame Wheel here. That's an easy one hitter there. Scyther comes out. It's faster, but we resist Fury Cutter, and it's looking like three hit KO here. But Fury Cutter just doesn't do that much. So we knocked that one out, and now uh, Kakuna's gonna come out. We're at level 13, and that's an easy one hit KO. So we level up to level 14. So we've gained additional levels there. I don't know, guys, this might just be possible now. So let's just see how we do against Rival 2 here now. Because Bugsy's gym, no problem for this Arcanine. Completely destroyed it. So here I'm going to save the game and we have to get into the Ilex forest before we can get the charcoal so we can't power up yet but here he leads off with ghastly we're just going to flame wheel it of course and uh, we don't manage to knock it out but hypnosis misses so that's fine now croconaw comes out we outspeed takedown does that much takedown again okay and take down again. So we knock that one out. We don't quite level up here. We're going flame wheel on the Zubat. Bite takes us to one HP, but we do manage to beat that fight with Arcanine on minimum battles. So, and without the berry, like if we had slapped a berry on there, we would have gotten through. So we've technically done Arcanine as our first Pokemon through this second section too, through Bugsy. And we can just see, like, this Pokemon is basically going to be fine um, getting through the game. 
And that tells us then that, you know, at least getting through, through the first two gems, I guess I should say, we're going to have to deal with Whitney and Whitney's going to be hard. Excuse me. But technically we could get enough casino coins to learn fire blast and then maybe we're just doing enough damage anyway we just have to see but yeah so there we go arcanine no problem so now we got to test out growlith right growlith is the unevolved form of arcanine i don't expect it to be as strong as this but you know should still be a good pokemon but it is good to see that, yeah, a lot of these Pokemon that are worried about getting through the Union Cave don't actually need to worry because there are no required battles in Union Cave, which is kind of stupid. <laughs> like, kind of ridiculous, honestly. Now, the problem with this Growlithe is it starts with only Bite and Roar, which means that, you know, it's Bite is a dark type move, obviously. Um, it can damage things, but... We're not going to be fast enough, I think, to go for flinches here. And we don't have a fire type move. Let's see. And we don't get Ember until level 9. Which, I mean, being a slow level up Pokemon, we don't even get there on um, Faulkner. So this is one that I think might just lose because of the lack of moveset. But we got to see. Maybe the berry does enough. Maybe it's just good enough. But... Otherwise, we continue the trend of evolved forms get through and unevolved forms don't. Here, I'm taking off the berry because I think we need to try to beat rival one without it. If we're going to really have any shot here. So here, let's just try this. Oh, we're getting the, the flinches though. Yes. But yeah, I mean, this could be our saving grace. If we manage to outspeed in any sort of way, then we can obviously go for the flinch strat. And uh, let's just check the stats here. We are coming in at level six. We've got 24 HP. We know bite and roar. We've got 15 attack, 12 defense, 15 special attack, 12 special defense, 14 speed. We're not gonna outspeed anything, but maybe the berry will make this one possible. So let's just get into the first fight against Honest Abe and find out. There's nothing to do here other than just to sit here and spam bite. Um, we heal with the berry. We should get two more hits. So yeah, it works out. Ooh, 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 ooh. So here, let's just heal up. I'm going to give another berry here because I think we may need it against this, this, uh, Rod Smith here. And, um... Here, let's just keep biting. He gets a critical hit turn one. Okay, but we can get flinches here as well. We heal up with the berry though. Now we're up to level seven. We're gonna keep biting, keep biting. This whole thing is just a bite fest. There we go. So we get through the bird keeper there. Now we can heal up with a potion. We can give the last berry here to Growlithe and uh, save the game. And let's check the stats now as we go into Faulkner. So we're at level seven. We've got 27 HP. It's like 11 less than we had with Arcanine, if I recall correctly. We've also got a much worse move set. We've only got Bite really as an attacking move here. Roar is not really gonna be useful. And uh, we've got 17 attack, 13 defense, 17 special attack, 14 special defense, 15 speed. We can get flinches with Bite but I think we're gonna need a lot of luck here. Let's see if it's possible though. Let's just see if we can find a way through Faulkner in theory by getting flinches. There's flinch one. Okay, we get one mud slap, but we managed to knock Pidgey out. Now we're on to Pidgeotto where we're outsped. He's doing like eight damage per hit. Um, we're healing up with the berry there. We need to not miss. Oh, uh, come on, I called it. We might win with one more hit and it might be a range. We might need a crit, something like that. Like I said, the ideal run is one where we get two flinches in a row on this Pidgey so that it just can't even hit us with Mudslap. There we go. So now we're to 
Pidgeotto on full health at level 8 and with no accuracy drops. We're going to heal up to 24 HP here. And there we go. Growlithe does get through with the, the flinch lock. Okay. So Growlithe is another Pokemon that has beaten Faulkner. And it's our first unevolved form to get through Faulkner today. Growlithe, you absolute legend. Look at him. Look at this this angry doggy. He's amazing. <laughs> so we get through at level 8. We've got 29 HP, Bite and Roar. We've got 18 attack, 14 defense, 18 special attack, 15 special defense, 17 speed. We're not amazing, but we might just have a shot. The bites might just be the, the thing that gets us through this. And because Bugsy's gym doesn't have any Pokemon that are really scary for us, and we should be able to get to level 9 before that anyway to get access to Ember, I think this is going to work. I think this Pokemon's going to get through, and if we can manage to outspeed Croconaw by getting the levels in Slowpoke Well and getting the levels in Bugsy's Gym, I'm not sure if we'll outspeed or not, but if we do, the Bites might just allow this Pokemon to beat even Rival 2 on minimal battles, and then it's just a question of how far can we go. But yeah, so here, we're, we're going to uh, claim a victory here with our Growlithe and we need to update how we're doing because this is the last of the gen 1 Pokemon so now when we pop back here and see yeah we've gotten a slight advantage 56 going through 34 not passing this section of the game three more to go what do you think do we get through with Meryl as a Meryl and pseudo Wudo I'm not sure I'm, I'm honestly just not sure but I mean, Pseudo Wudo, I believe, is a rock type, which I think will help a little bit here. If it has good defense, I think it has a shot. So let's start with Azumarill, because I want to see what kind of moveset this thing gets. Way back in the day, I remember the early days of the internet in the 90s when these games were coming out. There were, before Gen 2 even came out, Meryl was this, like mythical pokemon online people were talking about that name as like a poke god of gen 1 and basically they thought some of the glitch pokemon that could be caught in the game were actually these these poke gods right these these legendarily like better than mewtwo more powerful than mewtwo pokemon and they basically said at that time that meryl was a water pikachu um but that it was god tier, that it had god tier stats. Uh, that obviously is not actually the case, but you know, it's uh, still what it is. So here we've got Azumarill. And uh, here it is a water type, of course, but it's starting the game with Tackle, Defense Curl, Tail Whip, and Water Gun. This might get us through, yeah. Like, you know, we've seen Defense Curl strats be pretty good so far in the series. And, uh, you know, Water Gun for a same type of attack move, not too bad. We've got Tackle for coverage, so we shouldn't struggle against Chikorita too much. Okay, and it's going to learn Rollout via level up, Bubble Beam via level up, uh, Double Edge, Rain Dance, okay. So there are some interesting things going on with this Pokemon, I'm just saying. Now, there are some people like, uh, I think Smith plays Pokemon, for example, who have been doing videos about like how bad movesets are in Gen 2, especially level up movesets and especially for the new Gen 2 Pokemon. The reason I think that they're so bad is because Gen 2 has just a massive list of TMs that everything learns. And they added so many TMs in the forms of like the elemental punches, headbutt, uh, hidden power, which can, you know, be, of course, affected by our DVs or IVs. Um, just so many different things to the game that made TM movesets so overpowered and so generalized in this version, I think, is the bigger thing. Like, everything learns everything in this version, it seems like. That, you know, you have that, plus you have the egg moves. I think that's why they made the basic level up learn sets kind of trash for a lot of these Pokemon. 
here we're gonna just take away our item i don't think we need the berry for rival one let's see how this fight goes though so first attempts here my plan is this i'm going to defense curl first um in fact i'll defense curl again so that his tackle doesn't do much now i'm gonna tail whip him and tail whip him again i'm even gonna tail whip him again and now i'm gonna go into my tackles and expect to do a lot more damage than him because you know i have the defense curls he doesn't have any defense buffs and uh i think this will work out appears to work out right there so there we go we have managed to pretty easily dispatch rival one there but i think it works out in a lot of other spots too where defense curl allows us to boost up our defense enough and then water gun is just fine i think rival two is going to be a nightmare though because those razor leafs are going to cut through this pokemon so hard um and i think that's where we really run into trouble is rival two we're gonna have to see if we learn anything useful to get through there we're gonna save the game and the tale of the tape for this one we are coming in here at level six we have 29 hp our moveset is tackle defense girl tail whip and water gun and we have 12 attack, 16 defense, 12 special attack, 16 special defense, 12 speed. So we're apparently more defensive than anything else. Not very fast, but let's see if it actually translates into anything useful here against this bird keeper. Um, I'm going to go defense curl first. And now I'm going to go into my water guns, just trying to get him to do a little less damage. We're going to heal up, obviously, with the berry here. But it's more about just getting him doing less damage so that we get better ranges. And there we go. We we managed to win that fight just fine. Here I'm going to now heal up with a potion. I'm going to try this, this bird keeper without any berries. Let's just see. Let's see if he works or not. Um... Here, we're just gonna go straight for Water Gun. Looks like a three hit KO. He's misses the first tackle, which is also very nice. I mean, we're already pretty defensively bulky, so I think this is fine. Get a nice crit there. So yeah, we, we get through that fight very, very easily. Now here, we're going to just potion up. Um, I'll give the berry just to be safe here. Let's save the game. And so last check before we take on Faulkner, we've leveled up to level eight now. That's important because we get a damage rounding threshold with this Pokemon. Level eight means that you do a little more damage. On top of that, we've got 36 HP. We've got the same moveset, but now we have 15 attack, 20 defense, 15 special attack, 20 special defense, and 15 in speed. We're not gonna outspeed things, but we, we just have to survive. So here, let's get into the fight where I think we're going to lead off with some defense curls in order to increase our defense. Um, just get it so that hopefully the Pidgeotto also won't do much damage when it hits us with Gust. Um, not sure we need all six. I'm just going for it because I can. Here, let's go Water Gun. Water Gun's doing decent damage here. Okay, we're still above half health. We're still in the green there. We level up to level nine. Gust does like two damage now. It's exactly what I wanted. Now he gets a critical hit though. So he takes us down low. Fortunately, we've got the berry on. And uh, yeah, we are able to easily win that fight with Azumarill. So there we go. Um, we can say now that Meryl, if it does get through to this point, it's not going to get water gun until it's... Um, what, until it beats that Pidgey on Faulkner's team. But Azumarill does get through, level 10, it's got 43 HP. I mean, we're not weak to anything in the next section, except for the rival and his Bayleaf. And that's what I think is going to be the actual issue for this Pokemon. I don't see how we get through Bayleaf with its access to 
Razor Leaf. You know, and later in the game we could get Ice Punch, which would be super effective. Um, you know, and Blizzard, which would be super effective. Icy Wind, which would be super effective. But we just don't have anything for Rival 2, I don't think. Like, we could go Mud Slap strats and try to lower accuracy. As mentioned, we do get Rollout. Rollout might be a play. Just because it's going to build up damage and maybe we end up doing enough. Yeah. That's the only strategy I can think of. Like, if we could build up rollout enough against the, the Ghastly, maybe we would be able to do enough damage once we got to the, uh, the Bayleaf. Anyway, that does it for, for Azumarill. It does get through. And it's going to be time to move on to... The next Pokemon. Let's pick up our Meryl here. Cute little water mouse as opposed to a cute little electric mouse. And uh, yeah, our starting stats are not looking very good. <laughs> and we start with only tackle and defense curl. We'll learn tail whip at level six and then water gun at level 10. Let's fight rival one. Let's see. Okay, he outspeeds us. But we're gonna just defense curl up. Um. Okay, he's doing two damage per hit now. And we're doing like nothing. Oh, and he gets the crit. Come on. He always gets the critical hit, it feels like. Oh man, we're just resetting there. If we're ever gonna get through this, we need like a growl miss. Then we need to set up our defense curl. Um. You know, but. Ideally, like he he doesn't sit here and you know hit us every single time with crits is the bigger thing. Like the crit rate needs to go in our favor, not his favor. Like he's doing two damage, we're doing two damage as long as he doesn't critical hit. There he goes for growl, so now he's gonna lower us to doing one damage, but we finally get through. That was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nightmare with Meryl. Oh god, Meryl, you're terrible. The lack of anything other than defensive stats. Kinda bad. And uh, here, going into the Honest Abe fight, we are at level 6. We've got 26 HP. Tackle, Defense Curl, and Tail Whip now. We've got 9 in Attack, 12 in Defense, 9 in Special Attack, 12 in Special Defense, only 11 in Speed. This could be terrible. So we're going to set up some defense curls first, I think. I think that's absolutely required. So Peck does, yeah, like seven damage. Okay, two defense curls. Now I'm going to actually tail whip him as well. We'll heal up here. And how much damage do we do? He's still doing five damage per hit. And Meryl's doing nothing. And that's with all the setup from defense girl I just don't see any way that we get through that fight with uh Spiro so I think we have to eliminate uh Meryl from this so I think we add Azu Meryl and then we just declare Meryl dead <laughs> dead to me just look back and see we've only got pseudo Wudo left we're sitting at 57 to 35. So in this one, we're basically seven to five, uh, slightly over 50%, no matter what happens. But let's see if Pseudo Wudo can just, you know, do this one better than what Meryl's done. Now I decided to go up against Totodile because the whole story is like with the squirt bottle, right? Like Pseudo Wudo don't like water. <laughs> so we're, uh, we're gonna, Put it up against its arch nemesis. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna hit it with some water guns as we go through this. I don't know, like Razor Leaf might actually be tougher for it to deal with, but there we go. We've got Pseudo Wudo now on the team, and it starts with Rock Throw and Mimic. Really? We can mimic moves. That's kind of interesting, because we could mimic a move like Gust or something. Um but Rock Throw will be super effective in Faulkner's Gym, and that might just be the play to make it so that we are able to just easily 
KO things. I'm I'm actually very interested now to see how Pseudo Wudo does because, I mean, it was always kind of iconic because of the fact that it's it's basically the Snorlax of Gen Two until you get to the end game and you actually, you know, meet a Snorlax. Um, you know, here in the early game, it was like this is the Pokemon that's blocking you from going past you know the whole next section of the game you know how do you get through it i don't think we need a berry for this first fight so let's take that berry off let's save the game and man they buffed the accuracy of rock throw a lot so rock throw might actually be decent here in gen 2 let's just find out though so here we've got Totodile up against us. Scratch should do nothing. And look at the rock throw. Do damage. Oh, this is nice. We easily win. We don't level up though. Um, I'm not sure what level up group we're in yet. Um, I'm going to have to see what level we reach the gym at. But yeah, later, you know how we could get through Croconaw possibly is by mimicking Hypnosis. And then using Hypnosis on Croconaw and beating it that way like that could be a strat i'm going to try to do this without berries though so here let's get to the stats of pseudo wudo we are coming in here oh look at his little little jiggle oh he's jiggling oh what the heck oh man they were just gen 2 legendary <laughs> and uh yeah so pseudo wudo is Coming in at level 6, it's got 26 HP, it's a rock type of course which gives it a huge advantage. We've got 15 PP and rock throw that I think we're going to use. Mimic I don't think really comes into this one. Then we've got 18 attack, 20 defense, 10 special attack, 14 special defense, only 10 speed. We're not going to be fast, but I don't think it matters if we don't take any damage. Or if we mostly don't take damage. I guess I should say. So here, let's go rock throw. It's not quite a one hitter, but it is a two hitter on that, that Spearow. Level up to level seven right there. Cool. Let's go and just fight this guy. I don't think we need to heal even. Um, so he just tackles and rock throw is just a one hitter there. And okay, tackle and rock throw is a one hitter there. We are getting to level eight. Okay, so we're in the medium fast level up group clearly because of the fact that we have at least gotten you know back to or get gotten up to level eight so here it's time for Faulkner. let's check the stats we have a level eight pseudo wudo with 31 hp rock throw is probably the play here mimic probably not probably doesn't do anything for us then we can uh rely on our attack stat we've got 23 attack 26 defense 12 special attack 18 special defense only 12 speed i'm not sure we even outspeed the first pidgey let's see but we're just basically resetting here until we hit the rock throws i think because mud slap's not that strong you know um but the accuracy drop is the problem because now we just haven't hit any rock throws oh god oh god they were like make it so that only rock throw doesn't hit after a mud slap clearly and here even the pidgeotos are going for rock or for mud slap we need to land one more rock throw come on one more rock throw is all we need there we go so pseudo wudo does beat faulkner on the first attempt pseudo wudo's just fine here think on bugsy it's gonna be fine too rocks getting thrown at bugs it's super effective scyther four times weakness to rock throw the question is how do we get through the rival two fight and like i said i think mimic is the key i think it, we mimic like hypnosis and then we as long as we can survive one hit we might have a shot of putting him to sleep and then just knocking him out from there this is going to be incredibly interesting but regardless we have, in fact, managed to beat Faulkner on minimum battles with Pseudo Wudo, which brings our total today to eight Pokemon getting through and five Pokemon failing. If I recall correctly, let's uh, just pop back over here. Okay, so 
We can find at the end of the day that we beat Faulkner with 58 Pokemon and we failed with 35 Pokemon. Now, this episode was really the tale of evolved forms versus unevolved forms. And it's a trend that we're starting to see as we go through this. What this basically means is if you do the standard solo running meta, where when you say like, can you beat the game with a Vile Plume, you start with Vile Plume at the start of the game. Then in that case, with these fully evolved Pokemon, there's not really much need in order to level up before you fight Faulkner. The only cases where that hasn't been the case are of course, in the case of Venusaur, we had that situation when we got to Beedrill. Of course, Parasect was terrible and couldn't get through. Ariados was terrible and couldn't get through. But look at this. Everything else that has failed has just been an unevolved form. If you have a fully evolved Pokemon from the beginning of the game with a lot of the standard solo running meta, you don't have any need to take optional battles before Faulkner, except in very specific cases. On the flip side, most of these Pokemon that have failed are failing because they're unevolved forms. So if you did like Squidgy, you know, my, my guy, my favorite Gen 2 solo runner, and you did starting with the first stage Pokemon, well, then it gets a little bit more complicated. In those situations, yeah, if you have a type disadvantage or if you don't have a good move set for dealing with your rival, in some cases, just if you have not great stats, you would need to take optional battles before you fight the first gym. So Pokemon like uh, Natu, Pokemon like Meryl, Pokemon like Cyndaquil, Pokemon like Psyduck, uh, Meowth, Meowth. These are being run on max DVs, the best possible starting stats for these Pokemon. So if these ones don't get through, we know that no randomly generated version of these Pokemon gets through this fight. And that tells us like, okay, if you come in and you do squidgy style, go to the Sprout Tower, get a couple extra levels. If you don't do that, if you do it the Scott's Thoughts way, the, the J Rose way of starting the game with the fully evolved Pokemon, well, then you should really back up and reconsider whether you need to take optional battles before this fight or not. And keep in mind that there are still situations where unevolved forms are getting through. Uh, Chincho. Pichu, Cleffa, Iglybuff, you know, these completely unevolved forms are getting through this section. Uh, even Pokemon like, uh, what, what did we have? Nidoran male gets through this without any issues. You know, there, there are a lot of spots where you don't need the optional battles, even with unevolved forms, uh, Charmander, Squirtle, Sandshrew. I mean, there, there are a bunch, right? So it's, it's not like it's cut and dry that if you're on an unevolved Pokemon that you have to take optional battles before Faulkner. It's just saying that if you're an unevolved Pokemon, you might have to take optional battles before Faulkner, but I still think you should at least try to go to the gym and find out before you start grinding. Then if you do run into trouble, go to the Sprout Tower, beat up on those trainers, and then come back and you're probably good to go. You probably don't need to do any additional level grinding. There might be a couple cases where that's not true in the case of maybe something like a Weedle, Caterpie, maybe like a Spinarak, but in general, you would get new moves. You would be, be pretty well good to go at that point. Anyway, that does it for this episode. We got to figure out what to do next. So let's look at the next set of Pokemon that we're going to try here. All right, so for next time, we're going to line up 14 more challengers, and these are going to be incredibly interesting, I think. We're going to do the Poliwag line, but we're also going to have Politoed, which is going to be very interesting to basically match up Poliwrath against Politoed to see which one is better for this section. Then we're going to have the Abra line, which I think Alakazam and Kadabra do just fine here. Abra is probably getting wrecked. I don't think it knows any moves. We're going to have the Machop line, which is going to have a type disadvantage. We're also going to do the Hopip line, another line with a type disadvantage going into this. I think Hopip also doesn't start off with any attacking moves. So this is going to be incredibly ridiculous. Finally, we're going to have Apem. 
I'm not sure about Apum's moveset, but I've heard things that it's pretty good. We're just going to have to find out if that's in fact the case. But with that, we're ready to finish this episode. So, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.